So, your team didn't make the NFL postseason. Boo hoo! Just kidding, uh, as a Broncos fan, I literally cried. So today, I wanna help you pick a team to root for in the postseason. This is an important decision, and I will provide a guide for you to help you pick your bandwagon playoff team to meet your needs. Let's start with the Dolphins. Maybe you wanna root for a fun team. If you like speed, then Miami is your crew. If you like speed, it's, Miami's also your city, right? Yeah, they got a lot of speed there. <laughs> But in year eight, Tyreek Hill is still very much the fastest, deadliest player in the league. He's been so good this year that no one's noticed that Jalen Waddle has over a thousand receiving yards through 14 games as a number two receiver. Three of the fastest players in the NFL all play for the Dolphins. That includes Hill, and then you've got running backs Devin Achan and Raheem Mostert. And then there's Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungavailoa. Is he great or is he less than mid? Nobody really knows, but he came back from some of the most devastating concussions we've seen uh, in 2022, contemplated retirement at age 25, and is now playing as well as any passer in the league. Until, well, you know, he through that interception that cost his team the division. The Dolphins haven't won a playoff game though since December 30th in the year 2000. It's been 23 years. That's enough time for a baby to be born, get a driver's license, buy and smoke its first cigarette, go to a bar and have their first abortion. If there's anyone that would give a great victory speech after winning a Super Bowl, it would be Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel. With all due respect, F off. If you still want some risk, maybe you should root for an underdog, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Despite being a playoff uh, participant for the last three years and winning it all in 2020, the Bucks are the true underdogs of the NFL playoffs. No one cares about them. They won the worst division in football and uh, they're three point underdogs at home against a shitty Eagles team. Quarterback Baker Mayfield might be the ultimate underdog after finally finding his place in Tampa Bay following his trade from Cleveland to Carolina and then signing with the Rams a year ago. Four different teams in the span of two seasons is crazy, but he has playoff experience and he was really good in two playoff games in 2020, throwing four touchdowns and just one pick with the Browns. Baker's redemption story would grow with the playoff win this weekend, and so would his bank account. Baker is also playing through a rib and ankle injury, making him an injured underdog. And even if he wins it all, there's a chance he's still not on the Bucks roster next season. Now maybe you wanna root for the favorite like a real bandwagon, cowardly piece of shit. Oh, my team lost. I'm scared to get hurt again. So I'm gonna root for the 49ers in the NFC and the Ravens in the AFC. I'm sure there are some Lions fans who are terrified and have already claimed the Ravens as their AFC team. Why, you're nothing but a great big coward. <laughs> you're right, I am a coward. And that I support. But there's no sports person I respect less than the fan hedging their bets with the top two teams. We all had that friend growing up whose favorite team just so happened to be whichever team just won the Super Bowl. The only caveat I'll accept is if you are rooting for Lamar Jackson or Brock Purdy. They're not underdogs by any means, but they are two quarterbacks who no matter how well they play, seem to draw criticism from insane people across the football world. It doesn't sound like a franchise quarterback name. Purdy's a little too close to Turdy. Now, are you a perpetually drunk person who does bad things and hates everyone? Well, you would make a great Eagles fan this postseason. The Eagles lost their Super Bowl last year and are playing so poorly right now, uh, their chances of getting back to the Super Bowl are slim which makes them the perfect team to join as a perpetually angry person who seeks disappointment and reasons to be infuriated. This is your team if you want something to be pissed off about in the month of January that's totally out of your control. Or maybe you just want to root for pure evil. Then that team, of course, is the Kansas City Chiefs. They just won a Super Bowl last season. There is no reason to root for this team, unless, of course, you love Satan. If you are rooting for the Chiefs, 
but are not already a Chiefs fan, then you probably watched the movie uh, Dahmer last year and hoped he'd get away with it. You probably prefer Edward Norton's character in the first half of American History X. You probably watched 101 Dalmatians and thought, you know, to make a really good fur coat, you'd actually need to kill 202 puppies. It's supposed to be negative nine degrees during the Chiefs game on Saturday, and yet all of their players will stay warm. No, not because of sideline heaters, but because Dante's Inferno will keep their souls warm. Now, I still feel like the Chiefs, despite their record, are the team to beat until proven otherwise. Like Michael Myers, I will always assume that they're going to get back up off the mat. Kansas City has made the playoffs each of the last eight seasons, dating all the way back to 2015, and have advanced to the AFC title game every year under Patrick Mahomes, going to three Super Bowls and winning two of them. There are three types of people that still root for the Chiefs. People from Missouri or Kansas City, fair, pre-teens with Patrick Mahomes haircuts that spend eight hours a day on Fortnite, and of course, Swifties. And I'm not going after the Swifties because I don't want to end up in a shallow grave. God knows they're not old enough or strong enough to dig a proper deep grave. Now maybe you want to see arguably the worst team in NFL history finally win the big game. The Lions are your playoff bandwagon team. Detroit is playing in their first home playoff game since 1994, which believe it or not was 40 years ago. It's been so long, many longtime Lions fans are at the age where they actually have to wear a diaper during the game. Now the Lions are the true testament to the turnaround. Dan Campbell started off his coaching career 3-13-1 in his first season and since then has won 21 games in the last two years giving the Lions an edge they they haven't had since well ever the Lions are the second losing his team in NFL history and have never been to a Super Bowl and of course in their first glimpse at home in a playoff game since the Clinton administration Lions fans are going to be forced to root against their former hero and quarterback Matthew Stafford a guy they have no ill will towards and someone they were actually rooting for a couple years ago when the Rams won it all it just feels too perfect for the Lions to advance, they'll have to slay the remnants of the past to do just that. Or maybe you want a feel-good story. Dare I say the Browns? Dare I say this feel-good story deserves a happy ending? No, I'm talking about the least likely player in the entire playoffs, Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's renaissance, the Flacconaissance. The Flaccassants. <laughs> the man who gave Browns fans reason to flack off again. Joe Flacco is a feel-good story for everyone in their late 30s who has the slightest inkling that they could still hang athletically with guys almost half their age. Joe Flacco is playing the best football of his career since the last time he won a Super Bowl back in 2012. The last time he started a playoff game was in January of 2015, and this nine-year gap between playoff starts is the second longest in NFL history behind just Doug Flutie, who went 12 years in between. The Browns managed to start five different quarterbacks this season and still made it to the playoffs. Which is kind of poetic considering they've started more quarterbacks than any other team since the year 2000. Before the Browns called 38-year-old welfare collecting unemployed Joe Flacco off the couch, they watched as their starting sex offender quarterback got hurt and then backups PJ Walker and Dorian Thompson Robinson were ineffective and then also got hurt. If the Browns beat the Texans this this weekend, Joe Flacco will turn 39 years old on January 16th in between the wild card and divisional round, making his story extra feel good and extra inspiring. How about the least crowded bandwagon? Do you like having ample leg room on your bandwagon? Then you might want to root for the Rams. The Los Angeles Rams are the deadliest, most slept on team in the NFL heading into the tournament. Just a year ago, they backed up a Super Bowl victory with an absolute calamity of a season in 2022 with the roster held together by duct tape and their best defender and head coach contemplating retirement. It turns out all you need to get back into contention is to keep your elderly QB upright, draft a stud wide receiver who broke rookie records in the fifth round. Nakua with his 15th catch 
of the day. Fifth round, get a massive jump from your second year running back and go on a late season tear where you win seven of your last eight games. Can everybody just do that? The Rams defense started the season as a bunch of no names, but over the course of the year, guys like Quinton Lake, Russ Yeast, and Darion Kendrick have all become household names. I'm kidding. Uh, I, I don't know who those guys are. If LA fans won't bother to learn their names, neither will I, but they're playing good. Now maybe you wanna see NFL history made. No rookie quarterback has ever won a Super Bowl, but Houston Texans QB CJ Stroud has a chance to be that guy. The closest we've seen a rookie quarterback get to starting a Super Bowl was all the way back in 2008 when Joe Flacco, yeah, that guy I was just talking about, and the Ravens had a trip to the big game ripped away from them by Troy Palomalu. And just like Flacco before him, CJ Stroud came out of the NFL womb fully elite from the moment he started for the Texans. Stroud has been so good this year that he missed two games with a concussion, and he's still going to beat out the most prolific first year wide receiver of all time for Offensive Rookie of the Year. And despite only playing 15 games, Stroud Stroud was still comfortably over 4,000 passing yards and developed a special chemistry with the guy that might end up turning into the breakout star of the playoffs, 24-year-old receiver Nico Collins, who's turned in a pair of 190-plus yard games in the last month and change for the Houston Texans. Or perhaps you want a romantic love story. I suggest the Green Bay Packers, whose quarterback is literally named Jordan Love. Bears fans hate the Packers, especially after the Packers found their next franchise QB in Jordan Love. How funny would it be if Jordan Love, say, won seven Super Bowls and Chicago fans had to admit that they don't even have the best Jordan in sports history anymore? I have a feeling that this will be the first of many playoff trips for Jordan Love and the Packers. They're the youngest roster in the NFL this season with an average age of 25. I guess that's what happens though when you cut Mason Crosby. And they didn't really hit their stride until recently. They're simply too young and dumb to know that they're not supposed to beat the Cowboys this week. And that might just work in their favor and it might just get them a date with Leonardo DiCaprio. Now the two teams who don't have any room for you on their bandwagon, the Steelers and the Cowboys. Two of the biggest sprawling fan bases claim Pittsburgh and Dallas as their NFL teams. The Cowboys haven't won or even come close to winning a Super Bowl since 1996, and yet they remain the most popular team in the NFL. Nobody knows how or why, but I also know they don't fucking want you on their bandwagon. You either fully love the Cowboys or you hate them with a the passion. There is no in-between allowed. If you try and sneak onto their bandwagon, remember it's Texas, they have guns Guns, plural, and they will shoot you as soon as you step onto their property. As for the Steelers, it turned out the best quarterback on their roster was the guy who hadn't touched the field since 2021. In his three starts, Mason Rudolph has defeated the Bengals, the Seahawks, and most recently, uh, kind of the Ravens, who were resting most of their key players. It is truly remarkable, however, that the Steelers made the playoffs in a year where they combined to throw just 13 touchdown passes. That's the fewest of any team in the playoffs by 11, and just in general, it's tied for the second fewest in the NFL. Good thing they don't need bandwagoners because this is a team that should be one and done. I say should cautiously because maybe you want to have your heart broken. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. And not just broken but ripped out of your fucking chest and crushed before your very eyes. If you want to be hurt in ways that couldn't even enter your imagination, jump on the Bastard Bills bandwagon. The Triple Bs, baby. They're the only team that actually plays in New York, yet nobody even thinks of them as a New York football team. They have the most exciting quarterback on planet Earth, and nobody thinks they will even make it to the Super Bowl. The Bills are the only team to ever make it to four straight Super Bowls, 
Bowls, and they are the only team to lose four straight Super Bowls. Unlike Lions fans, Bills fans have been given hope only to see it ripped away from them in horrifying fashion. If you ever have wondered why Bills fans jump through tables at all of their tailgates like insane people, it's because that's the only way they can feel anything. I don't know where Mark Miller, this guy is. <laughs> He could be living, he could be dead, most likely deceased in a table jumping accident. Just kidding, he's still on Twitter, though I'm a little worried because he hasn't posted in almost two years. Mark, more than anyone, deserves to see a Super Bowl victory in his lifetime, but he just represents one of the million capos and soldiers in Bill's Mafia who have endured a lifetime of pain and suffering. And any just God would reward them with the championship. And I genuinely believe that despite the bizarre season the Bills have had, this could be it. It's why I am picking them as my bandwagon team. Buffalo all the way this time. And unlike the Steelers and Cowboys fans, Bills fans will gladly welcome you onto the bandwagon because they know that shit's about to crash and burn. <laughs> Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Have you subscribed yet? Did you? Maybe click those notifications so you know when I make more football videos. Oh heck, gee whiz, thanks guys.